will be a little bit different than we've ever experienced because we are following the theme of the past 15 months. Anything that we have expected to happen has not. We will talk a little bit about being upside down and turn around in a little bit. But in following that, our Sunday school year, we had nearly 100% attendance for all 40 weeks. Yeah. There might have been a birthday party here or a dance competition there, but for the most part, we all were there for the whole time. And in the spirit of what 2020 and 2021 has brought us, we are surprised. We have two that could be here for Children's Sunday. <laughs> However, these two have learned and grown so much that they are fully capable and ready to lead worship for you guys. So, let us begin. Oh, and then that's me with the children's message, right. just like the videos you've been watching for 15 months. Hi, it's Jen. I'm a little closer so they can see you. And we have another children's message for you. So if you'd like to come sit in the front to get a better view, you can. But trust me, you'll be able to see this one, too. You want to have a seat down there, Maya? Awesome. Amanda, you good? Okay. Come here. So guys, here, actually, how about you stand, there we go, that's fine. We had quite a year, right? Do you remember March 13th, 2020? Does anybody remember what happened that day? What happened that day? The coronavirus started. Pretty much, coronavirus pretty much started. The world? as we knew it, basically stopped on Friday, March 13th, 2020. That's when businesses started to close. That's when you guys went home with homework for an indefinite amount of time that turned out for the entire school year, you would be home, right? And in that time, in that very beginning, what, do you, what were you feeling? Scared? Wyatt, what were you feeling? I was scared and kind of mad because, well, I've been looking forward to starting school again. Exactly, exactly. So some people were, I bet grown-ups were a little scared. I bet grown-ups were a little mad, right, and worried. These are a lot of not so great feelings to have, right? So can you hold this for me for now? So what I have is 2020 in a bottle, okay? And parts of 2021 could fit in here as well, couldn't it? So this is 2020. And this is our Sunday school kit. Poor children is fear, worry, doubt, uncertainty, anger, okay? And then something happened. You know what happened? Mrs. Baldwin, Miss Nicole, and myself got together and said, we we got to do something, right? And it already started with Aurora doing children's messages to help keep the kids engaged and give people hope, right? And then we had requests to do two a week because people were really getting a little nervous, right? So then Mrs. Baldwin, Miss Nicole, and I thought, well, how are we going to do this? And then we came up with a way, through God, of course, to bring you Sunday school safely, right? Can you hold this again? So I have God and Sunday school right here. And the more and more the kids engaged in Sunday school, 
and watched the videos and participated in our Zooms, the more God came to fill them up. What do you think happened with your worry and doubt and fear when you got a little bit more God into your heart? It, well, let's see. Let's think. Whoa. It's going away, right? The more we put God in Sunday school into our heart, our fears disappear, right? But do they totally always disappear? Maybe they come back a little, right? We're humans, right? So maybe we thought, okay, we're only going to be out of school for two weeks. That's not bad. And then we learned, no, you're actually out for the entire summer and then some. Okay. But that's okay because we have Sunday school. And it pushed it right out, right? And so we did this over and over and over again. How many weeks did we do this? 75 is the children's messages. Yes, how many weeks of Sunday school did we pour God into our hearts? 40, 40 something, 40, exactly 40, right? Excellent job. So we now know and we have the tools. We've also learned how to pray, right? Not just pray for people, pray in front of people. We now know how to put more God into our heart so we can be free of the worry and the doubt and the fear that the past year has brought us, right? Let us pray. You don't have to do this. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the opportunity you gave us as a Sunday school and Sunday school staff. Lord, we had no idea how this was going to work. Lord, we had no idea if it was going to work. Through the worry and doubt and hardship and challenges that were faced in the past year, Lord, we learned so much about you. We learned how to share it. We learned how to live it. We've learned how to talk to you, Lord. We've learned to love each other and be that example. And we've grown together as a church family. So, Lord, although it was a really uncomfortable situation you put us in with a global pandemic, thank you for giving us the opportunity to grow like you did. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
And now our prayer of confession. We may say it together. Lord, we often forget we are your children. At times we live our lives as if you don't exist. We fall short of being credible witnesses of your love and grace. For the times we have fallen short, we ask your forgiveness. Prepare our minds and open our hearts so that we may be faithful to you in everything we do. Help us to open our eyes in wonder of your very capabilities. Help us to remember, celebrate, and share your love. Please let us pray as Jesus taught us to pray. Rejoice and be glad. Our God is full of mercy, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love. Through Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Dare to believe in the gift of a new beginning and celebrate with wonder our forgiveness. So now, our scripture readings are going to be a little different, and they need an introduction. Every week in our Sunday school videos, a new Bible story was presented to the kids. In the video, Miss Nicole read the Bible story. There was also an animated clip to supplement the Bible story. There was a craft to accompany the Bible story. And then on Sunday mornings, we had a live Zoom to talk about the Bible story. Aurora and Wyatt have chosen the two, two Bible stories that have most impacted them or that they could relate to or that touched their heart the most. So they will be doing the scripture reading through their Celebrate Wonder Bible Storybook that everybody used this year. Then they will explain to you why they chose that Bible story. We also have what is called a wonder cube, which is used on our videos. And as you roll a dice and you have to answer a question about that Bible story. So they don't, they don't know what question they're gonna get. So hopefully they, they have some answers. So Aurora, are you ready? Jacob being super hairy. 
Why? Because one time in a children's message, my mom said that I would get a spoon, my brother would get um, a basketball hoop, and my sister would get a house. And I don't want a spoon, I want a basketball hoop. Right. <laughs> Jacob had the stoop. He put some hair on okay. his back. Um, Esau really wanted that stoop, right? Ever yeah. walk into a house and you're like, oh, that smells so good. So what happened? So then Jacob said, I'll give you the stoop from the first so Esau traded his birthright for a bowl of soup? Oh my goodness. So what did we learn besides the order of birthright? What did we learn? Always pray before you make a big decision. Always pray before you make a big decision. Excellent job. You don't know this. You're preaching right now to everybody in the congregation. Did you know that? You're preaching. So. Good job. Let's do the wonder cube. Okay, so lots of different questions. <clears throat> and this says, Ooh, I wonder, what would you change about the Bible story? Um, Jacob prayed first. Oh, can you imagine if Jacob went to God, or actually Esau went to God first, right? Because it was a pretty impulsive decision. Sometimes it's really important that we talk to God first, maybe God would have directed him a little different, right? Excellent job. Excellent job. You may have a seat. And now for our New Testament reading. This is the word of the Lord. Okay. 
There is no doubt that God's kingdom can be upside down, backwards and just a little bit wacky. Jesus himself said that in his kingdom, the first will be last and the last will be first. He said whoever wanted to be great would have to be a servant. According to Paul, Jesus was equal to God and then he emptied himself and made himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant. Jesus was rich, yet for our sake he became poor, so that through his poverty we would become rich. Lots of backwards, upside down stuff. What if God told us that in order to learn more about him and become closer to him, he would remove us from our church and lock the doors. Or in order to become closer to our Sunday school family, he would wedge a physical distance for over a year. Well, that's exactly what our Sunday school was presented with in March of 2020. The term pivot has become all too common a practice. And what Sunday school did was nothing short of the most intentional, love-driven, faith-inspired pivot of all. <clears throat> no longer were the days of meeting in classrooms, making photocopies for take-home sheets in the office, and sharing goldfish snacks and juice boxes. No longer were the singing of praise songs and hugs of endearment until we could be together again next week. Through prayer and thoughtful consideration, the Sunday School program went completely virtual. Was started as a children's message each week with a huge thank you to Aurora for making them relatable and entertaining. And some email devotions to parents to share with their children. Our Sunday school began its evolution into the most successful year in recent history. Videos were created by our teachers every single week. Forty weeks. Forty weeks. <laughs> Noah only got 40 days. We got 40 weeks. Bible stories were shared, crafts were made, discussions were had, and prayer discipline was developed. A group was found and relationships were growing. <clears throat> Every Sunday, all of our students, including our friends who now live in South Carolina, would meet virtually. We discussed our weeks, the challenges of remote learning, the fear of COVID, the isolation we all felt. We shared our crafts. Whether in preschool, second grade, or even sixth grade, our kids ensured, encouraged and supported each other in their efforts. And every Sunday, we prayed together. It started as a simple list that was shared on the Sunday School Lesson YouTube videos. Not too soon after, parents were requesting people in situations to be added. Eventually, the children began saying the prayers. And while the world was in utter chaos, politically, pandemically, financially, our Sunday school students had become a strong and faithful praying family. We were no longer burdened by insecurities and were eager to pray for each other and with each other. God had turned our situation completely upside down. By us being physically separated, our addresses actually compiled four different zip codes. We were forced to look at things differently, specifically on a screen. Through that screen, we saw love, we saw understanding, we saw safety, we saw God. Now let us share with you some of the wonderment. Thank you. 
different. And it's been, it's been wonderful. These kids have learned how to have a relationship with God. And when you're four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, that's pretty darn amazing because there's so many adults in this world that don't have a relationship with God. These kids showed up every week, whether they had eaten breakfast yet in their pajamas or even in a costume, right, Brandon? <laughs> they came, they showed up, and they showed us their projects, and they talked. Have you, if you've been a teacher, and there's lots of teachers in this room, you'll know that you might want to have a discussion with your class. Yet not one kid speaks or is willing to share about what you're talking about. Not in this room. <laughs> you roll that cue and the kids are sharing. They are sharing from their heart. They are sharing thoughts and ideas that we as adults didn't think of ourselves. And as much as it was virtual and it really some cannot be with each other. We were with each other. And we were with each other all week. These kids were praying for us adults just as much as they were praying for each other. They were, they understand the community and what it is to be part of a church community. And that's pretty amazing. One of the things that um, I often share in my um, my part, my segment, which I tell you, I grew too because I don't like being on YouTube. I don't like my face being on the screen on Facebook and it always picks the worst picture. <laughs> okay, you know, you know, whenever on YouTube it picks like the worst picture of you when your uh, hair's a mess or your eyes are funny or whatever. But I got over that real quick because it's not about that. It's not about what I'm wearing and how I look, if I messed up my words on the video, because sometimes it would be literally 9 o'clock at night on a Monday night, and I'm still making my video for the week. That's me, like in hours, <laughs> or over here. Um, but, you know, there were some times where there was four or five takes, but one of the things that um, I touched upon in my and I thought, especially in this year, we not only need to learn the Bible stories, but in, in these books, these little books that are like a, a family activity book, there is a spiritual practice in it. And, you know, as kids to learn about spirituality, uh, you know, that, that's kind of heavy, that, that can be kind of difficult, but these kids have it, these kids get it. Um, and so there would be a little spiritual practice that goes along with the story. And, and I'm going to read this to you quickly because if you didn't watch our videos, you missed out. But um, I'll give you a little, little example. So in this, um, this particular week, it was about Jesus calming the storm. And it's from Mark 4, 35 to 41. <clears throat> and it's about the disciples in the, in, the, in the boat with Jesus. And Jesus falls asleep and this big storm comes. And the disciples are freaking out. And they don't know what to do. And they don't understand why Jesus could be sleeping through this storm. And they wake him up. And do you want to know if you remember the story? <laughs> and Jesus, Jesus says, stop. It's okay. Everything, be still. Everything's going to be fine. And they're like, what? How can everything be fine? Well, <clears throat> many times in life, we have these moments of fear. And sometimes we forget that God is with us. We, this year has brought more fear than, than, than any others for many people, um, including myself, with losing my job and different things that have happened with COVID. <clears throat> and so this, this spiritual practice says, the disciples were afraid of the storm, and sometimes we are afraid too. When life gets scary and we are afraid, we can call on Jesus to calm us down. And so I'm going to ask you to do this with me. 
so I we can teach you as well as we have taught the kids to do in a moment so that even as adults we have moments of fear in our lives or we may forget to rely on God that God is with us so I'm going to ask you to close your eyes take a deep breath in imagine that Jesus is standing beside you as you breathe out Say, I am not afraid. I don't hear you. <laughs> Jesus will keep me safe. Jesus will keep me safe. All right, we're going to do it one more time now that you know what it is. Close your eyes. Take a deep breath in. Imagine Jesus standing beside you as you breathe out and say, I am not afraid. Jesus will keep me safe. Jesus will keep me safe. This is just one example of the lessons and the spiritual practices that these kids have learned and are doing it in their lives. You didn't really think we'd be getting out early on Children's Sunday, did you? <laughs> <laughs> I heard that. <laughs> awesome, as I end the public speaking. It's good to see you all. My goodness, if you all Zoomed, when we all Zoomed, we would just need those incredible screens and more equipment and more money. <laughs> Thanks be to God for his generous gift of these seven wonderful kids. Amen. It's catching that emotional thing. <laughs> Um, that we had almost every week. Are you filling up with tears too? We're going to be a mess when you get up here for the scavenger. I had the older kids. <laughs> Don't go there. Um, and we had a book that had activities in it, word games, puzzles, and stuff. <clears throat> and they did their assignments. We talked about them a little bit. Um, and I am amazed at. Um, not only how smart they are and how much they listened, but how much they told us back to ourselves to learn, as Nicole has suggested. One of the neatest things that Jen added to this, and after Nicole did her thing and I did my thing, you know, you would probably want to stand up and stretch. You, you may feel that in the next 20 minutes when I'm done. Um, <laughs> But Jenny incorporated a scavenger hunt into the Zooms, and she would ask them to find something that had something to do with what they learned. So can I have my two, um, I, they're preachers now, I guess. Um, preachers, come on up. And um, we're going to see what we might have learned through this. I don't, I'm not giving you a Bible story. I'm giving you real life situation that what went on during COVID. First of all, I'm going to say we all adapted. Can you find anything that means we adapted or um, we adjusted or we were flexible? Um, what have you got here, Wyatt? A scratchy um, toy thing. So what does it mean to be flexible? What did we adapt to? 
What did we do? I, there were a few things that I'd never done before. I stuck right up. We adapted to remote learning. Yeah. You know, we take a lot of jokes about the senior citizens, and since the room is predominantly us, I'm just going to say I have Zoomed, I have chatted, I have been muted, <laughs> and I've muted. <laughs> hey, who knows? Flex. What else did we adapt to? Jenny and Nicole mentioned that everybody showed up. Can we adapt that to when we come back to Sunday school real time? We had excellent attendance. Two of the girls were from South Carolina. South Carolina. Showed up every single week. I, we have been in more kitchens. We have seen more um, breakfasts being chewed down in the middle of Jesus walking on the water. And we have been in more homes than you would ever imagine. We adapted. What else have we got? Um, oh, here's something. We completed the entire curriculum. Now, yeah. Having been there and done that, that is amazing. So we, we've adapted to that. They showed up. We taught them. Woo. Okay, now, the next thing that I want you to find something for is that we learned a lot. We got smarter. We got brighter. We got, what have you got here? I have seven light bulbs representing all of the kids on remote. Excellent, and look how bright they are. Which one is you? <laughs> yeah, I mean, we're, we're all very, very nice. Excellent. We are brighter than we were, not just me with chatting, but all of you with stories. And what do you got? A graduation Well, you think we should graduate from this? I think we should stay right where we are. Learning stuff and stuff, not home. Okay. Um, graduation means you've completed something, that you're smarter than you were when you went in, hopefully. Um, and it didn't cost much at all, did it? No, very good job. You want to put that on? Whoa. You want to hold up your light bulbs? Brighter, smarter, let's give it up for this. <laughs> the best one is we drew closer together. Now granted, I miss stopping for snacks a couple, three times too. But closer together was mentioned by one of the students in the Zoom, actually one of them up here. It's like family, it's like coming home when we met on Sundays to rediscuss all of this stuff. What have you got in your scavenger hunt might you find for showing that we are closer together? I have two things. This dog holding up a heart and also um, God, so the cross back there. Excellent. How does that cross show us that we're closer together? Because God brought us together. Exactly. What have you got, Miss Aurora? A picture. I have a picture of the Sunday school. Oh my goodness! You all have to see this at the end. It's a picture of us all on Zoom. Don't worry. Don't worry. Your hair looks fine. Very, very good. So let's see. I think we covered all of the things that we did. <clears throat> we were flexible, we were <clears throat> losing our voice, we were learning more things, and we were closer to God and each other. Is it any wonder? While well, Mrs. Baldwin was going on and on and on and on, it made me realize we need to thank Patrick because he shared his Zoom account for us so we wouldn't get cut off if we went on and on. And sometimes we did go a lot longer, but nobody was saying, it's time to go, it's time to go, it's time to go. 
So Patrick, thank you for your generosity.
every year Second Church has uh, two scholarship funds, the, the Fisher Memorial Fund and the Tulinger Scholarship Fund. And this, these funds are given to our, our students who have um, graduated high school and are moving on to uh, higher education. And it is my honor to present uh, these checks. Since this is on, this is going to be on YouTube, we're, we're going to not put in last names, but alphabetically, let's go Hadley. And our graduate, our high school graduate, Zach. Zach, don't go anywhere. So Christian Ed also has a gift for our graduates. Congratulations. So, come here, come here. Where are you going in the fall? I'm going to the University of New Hampshire. Going, uh, majoring in genetics, so something with that. Whoa. So you'll be able to figure out if you're more like your mother or your father? I guess. Yeah, okay. <laughs> well, there you go. Congratulations. Karen, I do realize we missed a hymn, so once we're done acknowledging people, we, can, we didn't miss a hymn? So we can. We can. Okay, all right, so only just a few more, I promise. Um, I would like to acknowledge our two future preachers for their contribution to Sunday school, their contribution to the conversation, their inspiration to our hearts. And they're not only, when you get, I don't know, I know from some of my kids, if someone volunteers you to do something, it's not always well received. Okay, but when I said, you guys are going to lead worship on Children's Sunday, I got, yes! <laughs> so for that, they should be thanked and recognized when the gift as well. So Wyatt and Aurora, can you come up, please? <laughs> Last one, I promise. We had, speaking of being voluntold, back in March when we decided to do some children's messages to help calm the fear of Sunday school students, I had said, hey, I need you to help me. And she said, okay. And then it turned into, I need you to help me again. And again, and again, and again. And before we knew it, Lots of people were watching Aurora on the children's messages, praying with an eye open, peeking a little bit. But in her revolution, she was leading the prayers towards the end of our children's messages. For 75 children's messages, Aurora showed up without hardly any objection. Some mornings were tough. I objected. She smiled, she knew what, she gave ideas about content, and she helped lead this ministry. So for that, she gets a special appreciation and gift as well. So now we can discuss our joys and concerns and why it work. Just because you got your gift, you're not done yet. <laughs> Almost. Come on. So do we have any joys or concerns we would like to share? 
Seven. Referring to the man who finally got his driver's license after two tries. Excellent. Congratulations to Kevin in getting his driver's license after two tries. Someone on the stage also had to have two tries. Congratulations. Robbie. It's great to be back. It's great to be back. Amen. Wonderful. The grandson is growing, and this is good news and very exciting times for them. Wonderful. As you'll notice in our bulletin, there is a prayer box. Let us be in the spirit of prayer. Heavenly Father, you have brought us together, whether virtually or in person, so that we may learn about you and learn to live like Jesus did. Lord, at this time, we want to continue to lift prayers for Robbie, who is home and going back to work, for Danny, who has been repeatedly hospitalized, for Tom, for Charlie, for those affected by senseless mass killings which have taken place recently. May we experience more love and less racial, cultural, and sexist hatred. Prayers of healing for Holly's mother, Frances, Prayers for Sharon B. Prayers for Jonathan S. and his family. Prayers for Liza M. Prayers for Dan, Sue F. and her siblings. Prayers for those who have upcoming or recent medical procedures. Prayers for the unemployed. Prayers for chaplains, medical staff, and all those affected by COVID. Prayers also for Reverend Nancy Haynes, who begins a three-month sabbatical coverage. Lord, we want to lift up and thank in thanks, our Sunday school teachers, our parents who helped facilitate it, virtual Sunday school, and most importantly, the kids, because they are showing us how it's done. Now, Aurora and Wyatt can share a prayer as well. Thank you, God, for all that you do for us. Thank you for taking care of us while we're in this pandemic. Thank you for helping us when we're a little mean and we need to be a little nicer and taking our sins to the cross. Thank you for helping the farm and sanctuary. Thank you for giving us technology because that's the only way we can see each other because of the pandemic.
And before Wyatt shares the benediction with us, which actually was one of our Bible stories, the Great Commission, the Great Commission, I would like to invite everybody to stay and have some lunch on our lawn, fellowship, smile at each other, look at each other's teeth because you can see them now as we smile. And I want to thank everybody for being here. So Wyatt, are you ready? So this is taken from Mark chapter 28, verses 16 to 20. Jesus came with the followers, special instructions to share good news about him in the world. Jesus said, go to all the people and teach them to love one another and do all the th other things I have taught you to do. I will be with you always, wherever you go, for all of the time. Now our postlude is just a recording also from our music that we use. It is called Very Good. Thank you. <clears throat> Oh. 